Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. General Hospital, spoilers Rick and Sonny, finally come face to face. Rick Lansing, portrayed by Rick Hurst, has been back in Port Charles since August 22. However, he hasn't come face to face with his half-brother Sonny Corinthos, Morris Bernard, yet. General Hospital fans are wondering when this might happen. Now, Rick Hurst has revealed what will bring the two characters together and how things might play out. Keep reading to see what the GH star had to say. The relationship between Rick and Sonny has been anything but good. Now, Rick is set to represent Ava Jerome, Mora West, in her upcoming court trial. She is accused of pushing Sonny's daughter, Christina, Kate Mancy, out of a window while she was pregnant. Christina was badly hurt, and the baby did not survive the incident. So she is faced with manslaughter charges for the death of the baby Christina was carrying for Molly, Kristen Vaganos, who is Rick's daughter. What a crazy situation. At the same time, Ava will have to go up against Sonny for custody of their daughter, Avery. Next week, Rick and Sonny will finally come face to face on General Hospital. Rick Hurst sat down with Soap Opera Digest to dish out what will happen between the two half-brothers. Of course, Sonny wasn't thrilled to hear who would be representing Ava in her upcoming manslaughter case. With Scotty, Ken Schreiner, Bamaye, Rick Lansing has stepped up to cover most of the legal issues in Port Charles. When Rick revealed that he was going to be Ava's attorney, Sonny's reaction isn't shocking. First, he says he's taking her case with the custody suit, which is enough for Sonny, Rick told Soap Opera Digest. But then Rick says, I am representing her in another matter as well. It just burns. You can just see it on his face. Sonny is quick to try and persuade Ava to find a new lawyer. He throws down a warning to her, like this guy will turn on you just like everybody else. Rick explained. The great thing is, it's very much cordial the minute they see each other. Rick's not going to bait him or anything. But ultimately, their better angels don't go with them as the conversation and the scenes keep going. However, Rick Hurst says the animosity between the two characters gets kicked up a notch when Sonny accuses Rick of trying to get Alexis thrown in jail. Rick and Liz, Rebecca Herbst, saw Alexis tossing a gun in the water at the footbridge. They reported what they saw to the cops. The second they start talking about, you turned in Alexis, and this, that, and the other, and the second they start addressing their daughters, Rick said, well, you can just imagine how the tension between the two fathers gets heated fast. At one point, Rick says that Sonny starts telling him that he's wreaking havoc on Alexis. That's when Rick really snaps. It gets down to the issues between these two, he said. Then things take a turn when they start discussing their childhoods. It's so great, the way Mo Bernard, Sonny, played it. Rick praised his coster. In the end, the general hospital actor said that the upcoming storyline between the two half-brothers is really well written. In the heart of Port Charles, Tensions had been simmering for years, and finally, it was all coming to a head. The Corinthos estate was eerily quiet, but beneath the surface, a storm was brewing. Sonny Corinthos, the formidable mob boss of Port Charles, was preparing for a confrontation that had been years in the making. His estranged brother, Rick Lansing, was back in town, and the long-standing bad blood between them was about to explode. The sun was beginning to set as Sonny stood in his dimly lit office, staring at a glass of whiskey he hadn't touched. His mind was racing with memories, betrayals, lies, and a rivalry that had torn their family apart. For too long, Rick had been a thorn in his side, a man driven by jealousy and resentment. Rick had always wanted what Sonny had, power, respect, and their father's love but their relationship had been tainted by deception, with Rick constantly scheming against Sonny, trying to take him down. 
Jason Morgan, Sonny's loyal enforcer and closest confidant, entered the room. His expression was as cold and unreadable as ever, but Sonny could sense the tension in his stance. Rick's on his way, Jason said, his voice low and steady. Are you sure you're ready for this? Sonny turned to face him, his jaw clenched. I've been ready for this my whole life, Jason. Rick's been a snake since the day he stepped foot in Port Charles. Every time I've tried to make peace, he's turned around and stabbed me in the back. This ends tonight. Jason nodded, his hand resting on the holster beneath his jacket. I'll be right outside. If things go south, I'll handle it. Sonny waved him off. No, this is between me and Rick. No guns, no backup. Just words. He paused, then added, at least, that's how it should be. But with Rick, you never know. Jason gave a curt nod and exited the room, leaving Sonny alone with his thoughts once again. The sound of footsteps echoed in the hallway, and Sonny's heart rate quickened. This was it. The moment he'd been anticipating for years. He straightened his suit jacket and moved toward the desk, taking a seat. He wanted to be calm, composed, and in control when Rick walked in. The door swung open, and there he was, Rick Lansing. His presence filled the room like a dark cloud. He was dressed in a sleek black suit, his face as sharp as ever, though the years had etched a few more lines of bitterness around his eyes. He smirked as he closed the door behind him, the tension between them palpable. Sonny, Rick greeted, his voice dripping with mock cordiality. Long time no see. Rick, Sonny replied coldly, his eyes narrowing. What do you want? Rick chuckled softly, shaking his head as he walked further into the room. Always straight to the point, huh? No small talk, no pleasantries. That's just like you, isn't it? Sonny's patience was already wearing thin. I'm not in the mood for games, Rick. You've been gone for years. Why are you back now? What's your angle this time? Rick's smirk faded, replaced by a more serious expression. He leaned against the desk, crossing his arms as he looked down at Sonny. You think I have an angle? After everything we've been through, you still think this is about taking you down. Sonny scoffed. Isn't it always? You've never been able to let go of your hatred for me. You've always wanted to destroy everything I've built. What makes this time any different? Rick sighed, rubbing a hand across his jaw. You still don't get it, do you? This was never about power or money. It was about family. It was about me trying to get a place in the family that you shut me out of from the start. Sonny stood up, his temper flaring. Don't give me that. You've done nothing but betray me, Rick. You kidnapped my wife, for God's sake. You threatened my children. You've crossed every line. And now you want to stand here and pretend this is about family. Rick didn't flinch. You're right. I've made mistakes. But you're not innocent either, Sonny. You always had everything, and you made sure I knew I wasn't part of it. You think you're the victim. You're just as guilty as I am. Sonny's fists clenched at his sides. He could feel the rage boiling inside him, but he fought to keep it under control. You've always been jealous, Rick. You couldn't stand that I had what you didn't. But that's not my fault. That's on you. Rick's eyes darkened, his voice dropping to a low growl. Jealous? Maybe I was. But that jealousy was fueled by years of you pushing me aside, treating me like I was nothing. You think I wanted to be your enemy? I wanted to be your brother, Sonny. But you never gave me the chance. For a moment, the room was silent, the weight of their words hanging in the air. Sonny felt a pang of something, regret, guilt. But he pushed it aside. He couldn't let himself feel sympathy for Rick not after everything that had happened. Maybe I didn't give you a chance, Sonny said quietly, his tone softer now. But you made sure there was no going back. 
Every time I tried to extend an olive branch, you turned around and stabbed me in the back. Rick's expression softened, but there was still a hardness in his eyes. Maybe I did. But we can't keep doing this, Sonny. We're not getting any younger. At some point, we have to decide whether we're going to keep fighting or find a way to move forward. Sonny stared at his brother, his emotions warring within him. Could they move past this? Could they ever be brothers again, after all the lies and betrayals? I don't know if we can, Sonny admitted, his voice low. Too much has happened. Rick nodded slowly, as if he expected that answer. Maybe you're right, but I'm willing to try if you are. Sonny remained silent for a long moment, his mind racing. Finally, he looked up at Rick, his eyes hard. I'll think about it. But if you cross me again, Rick, I swear there won't be another chance. Rick gave a small nod, understanding the gravity of Sonny's words. Without another word, he turned and walked out, leaving Sonny alone in the office once again, the weight of their past still heavy on his shoulders. As the door closed behind Rick, Sonny let out a long breath. The storm wasn't over, but for the first time in years, there was a glimpse of calm on the horizon.